Yo fam, good afternoon. I got out of Bible study and needed to come home as fast as I could and share with you what the Lord convicted me of, said to me in Ephesians chapter 5. We did verses 6 through 14, but I'm going to share with you verses 6 through 9. This is what the Word of God says. Don't be fooled by those who try to excuse these sins, for the anger of God will fall on all who disobey him. Don't participate in the things these people do, for once you were full of darkness, but now you have light from the Lord. So live as people of light, for this light within you produces only what is good, right, and true. And so the experience that I had was really, really cool. Um, I was sitting in Bible study, and while I was sitting in Bible study, you know, when you seek to hear from the Lord, or if you want, want to hear from the Lord, hopefully when you're in Bible study, you have like a journal or something, you know. Uh, and so I was um, writing in my journal, and I wrote, as I was writing, I was just confessing sin and, and just being grateful to the Lord for understanding that sometimes I find myself right here trying to excuse my own sin and my own behavior. And I was actually sharing this past weekend and told the story of me driving. I was going 80 in the 70. The Lord let me know that I was going way too fast. And uh, I was like, but Lord, like I'm keeping the spirit of the law. Nobody's around me. I'm on the road. Like the reality is I'm not being, and I was, I, I caught myself arguing with God, like making an excuse for my sin. And so as I repented, I was just like, looking at this passage as we were in Bible study. And so I was writing down, just telling the Lord, I'm sorry. The other thing that I was writing that um, um, I needed to repent of is that I really seek to use my time wisely. And sometimes um, because I seek to use my time wisely and not get caught up in foolishness, I don't entertain food. Like I don't talk to people um, because I, I, I really do want to spend my time as wise as I can. I want to take care of my wife, my seven kids. I have a lot of responsibility, but I don't want to use that importance um, of, of my schedule as a unintentional means of staying away from having conversations that God has put on my schedule because they're a part of his agenda. And so I was convicted by that. So I started writing and, and I'm looking at the text and the text says don't participate in the things that those people do but then the text also says um, for once you were full of darkness but now you have light from the Lord so live as people of the light and he says earlier in this passage what we went over the last time we were together imitate God in everything because you are his dear children live a life filled with love following the example of Christ he loved us and offered himself as a sacrifice for us a pleasing aroma and so I wrote in my journal I am the light of the world and when I wrote that I went whoa I don't think I can write I'm the light of the world Jesus said that and then it clicked and I shared with our staff and Bible study like sometimes we don't appropriate uh, Dominique Scott actually said it first sometimes we don't appropriate what the Word of God says what God says about us and God says you are the light of the world God wasn't playing when he said that he said it he meant it and so when I wrote, I am the light of the world, I just thought, man, that sounds blasphemous because I tend to focus on my shortcomings, my sin, my failure, but that's not what God focuses on in my relationship with him. I am not the light of the world because of my successes, right? I am not, I, I don't, I, I don't be kept from, God doesn't remove from me being the light of the world because of my uh, failures and, and he doesn't give me being the light of the world because of my successes, the reality is I am only the light of the world because he says so. As Dominique Scott so eloquently put it today, we have a comma where the world has a period. I am not enough in and of myself. And there are people running around saying I'm enough. Well, you are because Jesus declares that you're enough. But in and of itself, that statement lacks the reality that Jesus is the one who makes us enough. But if you already have in mind that that's what Jesus says, then yeah, you can say I'm enough because you have, just like I can say this, I can look at this text and I can say, I am the light of the world. Jesus says I'm the light of the world. He also says that of himself. Here, the Bible lets us know that he says that light within you is good and righteous and truth. I'm good. I'm pure. I'm righteous. Not because, and, and we do it. Look, I've done it. Y'all done heard me do it. Those of you who know me, nobody's good but God. And that's true. But what Jesus is communicating to the rich young ruler there in Mark chapter 10 and in Luke chapter 18 is that this young man is trying to call himself good apart from the righteousness of Jesus. 
But if you name the name of Christ, you're good. Not because you're good, but because he is. And when he looks at you, he doesn't see you. He sees himself. That is the gospel. So I am the light of the world. I am good. I'm holy. I'm righteous. I'm forgiven. I'm loved. I'm enough. Not because of me, but because of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that shed for me. And that's what he says. And sometimes we care more about our idea of our doctrine and right theology than the truth of scripture. I've been so convicted by that. The Pharisees were arguing with Jesus because he was communicating different than their theology and their, their theological slant, their doctrine, but they were wrong. And when I see this, don't be fooled or deceived. He uses a Greek word that means don't be cheated. Don't cheat the gospel. Don't, don't be fooled by those who try to excuse these sins. These sins he's talking about above, don't, don't, don't be deceived by the empty words of those who are trying to convince you, make good evil, make evil good, to those, those who are trying to excuse their sin. One of our sins is not appropriating what God says about us. God says we are the light of the world. God identifies himself with us. Jesus has no problem with that. He has no problem. He's not ashamed to call us brothers, Hebrews chapter 2. When, when, when Paul persecutes the church and Jesus confronts him, he says, who are you, Lord? And he says, I'm Jesus, whom you're persecuting. Jesus was dead and resurrected and was at the right hand of the Father. But he identifies with us. When you read Ephesians chapter 1, God wants to give us the best of himself. And I'm going to be the first to say, because of my, because I focus on my failure, my sin, my shame, I don't focus on what Christ's righteousness is. Listen. As biblical as I want to say I am, as much as I want to say I love the word of God and I'm teaching it, sometimes I'm allowing the deceit, the cheating of our current theological ideas to taint what God says in his truth of scripture. And so I can say what God says is true of me. Remember, repentance, as I said the other day, is when I get in front of God and I look in his face and I behold his beauty and his light so much that I go, I don't want anything back there that I used to have or used to know. I want to know him. And, and I want to know him the way that, that he knows him. But then I also want to know me the way he knows me. I don't need to know me the way I know me because I'm going to know me in a way that's different. No, the beauty of the gospel, the good news is for, for the lost. Jesus said, the son of man came to seek and to save the lost, Luke 19, 10. He said, those who are sick don't need a physician. Look, what makes me perfect for the gospel is my sin, my shame, and my failure. What makes me worthy of this gospel is not that I'm worthy because I've done something good. No, I'm worthy. I mean, I'm deserving of the gospel. I need the gospel because I'm a failure. I know it don't sound right theologically, but it's not about what sounds right. It's about what's true. Jesus was communicating, I came to seek and save the lost. What qualifies you as a sinner, what qualifies you for this good gospel is when you recognize I'm lost without God in the world. And, and on the other side of Christianity, what continues to allow us to see the beauty of this gospel is he changes our identity. Our sin doesn't change our identity. Our identity is found in Christ. And when God looks at us, he sees Jesus. These are elementary truths of the scriptures, but that we get away from because we get so caught up. Have you ever thought about this? So Adam was, was made perfect in the image of God and acted after his likeness, right? In, in the image of God, he made male and female. He created both of them in his image and after his likeness. Boom, Adam sins. Why? He has no propensity to sin. He has no sin nature. But why does he sin? Now, here's my personal belief. He's made in the image of God and after his likeness. I believe that Adam, as he sees the woman, he's supposed to be with her. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and uh, be united to his wife, and the two of them will be one. I think Adam goes, I'm supposed to be one with her, but man, she ate the fruit. What am I supposed to do? First Timothy chapter 2 lets us know that he was not deceived when he ate. I wonder if for love's sake, Adam said, I got to sacrifice myself. I'm sacrificing myself to be with her. And so he disobeys God. You know, the road to hell is paved with good intentions, right? Sin is always ultimately a mismanagement of something good that God created. Maybe Adam is thinking, I'm going to eat this fruit. Maybe Eve was thinking, I'm going to eat this fruit so that I can be more like God. That's not a bad desire. The thing is, you're just disobeying him. 
right? And so maybe Adam is thinking, I know this disobeys God, but I'm trying to keep his command. I want, I need to be with her. So he sacrifices himself on behalf of his bride, but he disobeys God to be with her. Guess what? Romans 5 calls Jesus the second Adam, and he obediently sacrifices himself for his bride to bring you and me to God, and that's why he's the second Adam. That's why I believe that Adam really did, out of a false understanding of love, uh, and not even really a false understanding of love, but an understanding of love where he would sacrifice himself to be with her. I really believe that's why he did what he did, and the second Adam completely obeys the command, he obeys God dies in order to bring us to God and make us clean and make us holy. Listen, don't be deceived. Sometimes theology and doctrine sound really good, but they're not, they're not from the truth of the scripture. And sometimes they sound almost blasphemous, but they're the truth of the scripture. I'm holy. I'm righteous. I'm good. I'm enough. I'm truth. Not because of me, but because of what Jesus says about me. I am the light of the world because Jesus has called me the light of the world. I found this out the other day in Pennsylvania. There's this beautiful, beautiful vine. And right around this time, it turns completely red and it looks like fire going up through the trees and it wraps around trees and its leaves can be huge and it's gorgeous. And if you don't know what it is, you might be inclined to go and grab it. You, you might be inclined to, to pull it off of a tree just because it's so gorgeous. You might be inclined to take that vine down and bring it into your house and go, I just want to, I just want to look, it, it almost looks like a poinsettia. It's just gorgeous but it's poison ivy and as beautiful as it is. And the Eurasian oil on it makes it look all beautiful and shiny and gorgeous. And you might be inclined if you didn't know what it was to embrace it and to go, this is gorgeous. This is beautiful, but it's poison. And sometimes as good as doctrine might be, as good as theology might be, it's not scripture. Sometimes these theological systems that we put ourselves in actually go against things that God has already said. And much like the Pharisees who said to Jesus, what you're saying doesn't agree with where we are. That doesn't matter because he's God. And so I'm just reminded, I wrote down, I'm the light of the world and was like, man, I can't, I can't say that, but no God, how am I going to argue with Jesus about who he says I am. He says you're the light of the world. He says, li according to this text, so live as people of light for this light that is within you produces goodness, righteousness, and truth. I hope that that was as much of a blessing to you today as it was to me. I needed it to just be reminded, yo man, sometimes you need to just get away from these other ideas and just look at what God's not even sometimes you always need to get away from these. Look at what God says in the text about you and how much he loves you and, and how he gave his life in order to be able to claim you as righteous, holy, and good. I hope it's a blessing to you. I love you. And I pray that you live in that light and that identity every day because Christ is the son Double entendre shining on us. I hope that you sense the warmth of his light today as you live in the light. God bless you. I love you. Peace.